Hey what's up guys I'm Matt here and today we have the GS9 Pro Max smartwatch which is the latest model in the series 8 line of GS smartwatches. It comes with many features inside it and comes in matte frame. So in this video we're gonna be checking out all of its features and what's new in the GS9 Pro Max. It has many watch faces similar to watch OS then we have watch OS menu style which is really smooth and it also comes with watch OS transitions for opening and quitting an application. So in this video we're gonna be taking a look at all of its features. But before we start, if you are new here, a subscribe to the channel will be highly appreciated. So let's get right into it and first of all let's find out what comes inside the box of GS9 Pro Max. So let's open the box. First of all in it we have the GS9 Pro Max smartwatch and if we lift this up we get woven silicone strap and a silicone strap inside it and in the end we have the user manual and the USB-A wireless charger. So let's take off the plastic wrap and here is the first look on the smartwatch. It is using the CCA SF312B551 chip inside it which is the latest and most advanced chip used in these replicas. It adds great smoothness and faster processing in the smartwatch. After that, it is advertised to come with an AMOLED display. But as far as I've checked, it is falsely advertised and it comes with an IPS display as confirmed with the darkness test. And here is a look at the bezel size. It almost has even bezels, but I think the lower bezel is a little bit thicker as compared to the upper one. It comes in matte frame. After that, it comes in 46mm size. The hard case will obviously not fit on it since it is in 46mm size and the biggest size in Apple Watch Series 8 or Series 9 is 45mm but if you use the silicone case it might fit when you stretch it but it might damage the case and the case won't also be used so easily. After that we have the knob key here which is not insensible and you will hear a clicky sound whenever you use it. It can be used to access the menu and to go back from selections. Then we have the side key which can be used to access the app history function. In settings you can go to key customization to customize the double click function on the side key. After that we have the microphone on the right side and speakers on the left side. On the back side we have the wireless charging and health sensors and here we have the strap locks. You will have to press the button and then push the straps to remove them. And here is how the smartwatch looks on the wrist. Which strap would you prefer? Let me know in the comment section below. After that let me show you all of the watch faces. First of all this watch face will be replaced by the custom watch face you use from the gallery. And other than these built in watch faces you can install one watch face from the dial market in the application. I will show it to you later in the video. Now let's take a look at all of the watch faces. These were all of the built-in watch faces. Unlike HK9 Pro, it doesn't have black red theme for this watch face. The watch faces have sweeping seconds hand. The smartwatch does not support 12 hour clock format, it only supports 24 hour clock format. The watch faces are interactive and you can access the applications shown on them. You cannot lock the watch faces, so even if you use the crown key accidentally, it will take you to the quick access applications page. After that, since it is based on watchOS 9, so we get the control center from bottom to top. And the control center has this style of watchOS but because of the colored buttons it is not looking exactly like Apple Watch. After that we have notifications from top to bottom. From left to right we have quick access menu and from right to left we have the quick access applications. After that if you check out the menu style then the icons are quite similar to watch OS although I prefer the style and the zoomed icons more in the HK9 Pro second generation. It also has the scroll down and scroll up gesture and it also has app opening and app quitting transition. You can double click to change the menu style and here is the list view. In the original watch OS we have a black background for the list view so that's why it is not looking exactly similar. Then we have this third menu style. So these were all three menu styles. In watch OS we only get the cellular menu style and list view. After that let me show you all of the languages supported by it. These were all of the languages supported by it. The normal screen time on the smartwatch can be a maximum of 30 seconds, but using the always on mode from the control center, the display can stay on for a maximum of 20 minutes. After that, the smartwatch also comes with a screen off dial which turns on when the normal screen time ends, but one negative thing about it is that it can only stay on for 10 seconds and after that it turns off, which makes it pretty useless. 
It does not have tap to wake option or the palm gesture, but it does come with the raise hand to brighten up the screen option. But if you are using the screen of tile, then the raise to wake option turns on to the screen of tile instead of the watch face. You can also customize the sound level for calls and media. We also have the call ring option here, we will test it later in the video. And if you talk about the vibration intensity, it is not so strong. And you can also add a passcode in the smartwatch. It uses the Wayfit Pro application which contains ads and sometimes even full screen video ads which can be a really bad experience for the user. After that we have the watch faces. The Wayfit Pro application has both paid and free watch faces and to be honest most of the good watch faces in it are paid. So you will either have to activate the membership to get all of the dials for free. You also get many other privileges. Otherwise you will have to purchase each of the watch face you like for 99 cents. You can go to the customize section to use your own picture from the gallery. The album dial option doesn't work. You can only use one picture at a time. And after selecting the picture we have a variety of digital clock styles available here. And you can also choose between three positions from here. You cannot freely move it on the watch face. And you also can note use pointer dial on the custom watch face. Then we have notifications and in notifications we have the other option which means it can send you the notifications for almost all of the applications on your smartphone even if that application isn't listed here. It doesn't have to include all of the applications but includes most of them. But I've heard many notifications issues about the Wayfit Pro application, mostly about Facebook Messenger. It does not wake up the display when you receive a new notification, it only vibrates and the vibration intensity is also not so strong. When the display is turned on, it shows better notification and you can tap on it to open it. It shows most of the content in the notification, but unfortunately it also doesn't support emojis. It has tagged notifications, any notifications from a single application are tagged, here is the stack for Instagram. But one bad thing about it is that once you have read a notification, it deletes it from the history, maybe it is because it has low memory. It also has red dot alert for unread notifications and if you want to mute the notifications, you can enable the do not disturb mode from the control center. After that we have the wallet option here. Then we have the my QR card option by which you can add QR codes of these applications. Then you can scan that QR code to open the related application. You can also push weather updates to the smartphone and you can also check the weather for the upcoming week. Here are the values compared to the iOS server. The values are quite similar but the weather condition isn't. From the application you can also change the temperature unit. It also has NFC customization option and you can also use the smartphone as an NFC tag. You can also use the smartphone as a Bluetooth setup button to click pictures directly using it. Then we have the find a bracelet option using which the smartwatch will start to ring and vibrate so you can easily find it. In the control center, we also have the find phone option using which the smartphone will start to ring so you can easily find it. You can also sync your favorite contacts in the smartwatch. In other settings, we have early point measurement and race to wake. In the end, the smartwatch also supports firmware updates. To connect with Bluetooth calling, access the control center and enable the Bluetooth calling icon. And after that, connect with watch call. Once connected, you can call directly from here. And you can also receive calls directly on it, but it does not show the name of the caller. It also rings on the incoming call. And when you accept the call, it does not have the option to transfer the call to the smartphone. But you can mute the call from here and adjust the volume from here. And in the end, you can end the call from here. Using Bluetooth calling, you can also access the voice assistant on it. How's the weather today? The volume level is not so high and it is also not so clear. After that, I'm gonna disconnect from Bluetooth calling and now let's check if we can control the media playing on our device. So let's try now. So no, you cannot. To control the media playing on your device, you will have to enable Bluetooth calling. And a big negative point about it is that if Bluetooth calling is enabled, then whenever you will use any of these functions, it will transfer the sound from the smartphone to the smartphone. First of all, if you talk about the health related applications, we have heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen level, respiratory rate and blood sugar level checker and if you use any of them on the table the sensors continue to work and it starts to give values in a few seconds which means it does not have a detection and i wouldn't trust the values given by these smartwatches after that we have a lot of sport modes in it and you can tap on the three dots to set the time or calorie target or you can start without a target then we have chat gpt so if you haven't watched my video yet, you can find the link of it in the description box below on how to use the chat GPT on these smartwatches. 
After that, we have sleep tracker, then we have pressure data. Activity record stores all of your fitness data. You can scroll all the way down to change the target of steps, minutes, and the number of activities. You can also add alarms directly in the smartwatch. Here's how the alarm is shown. It does not ring, it only vibrates, and the alarm alert only stays on for 10 to 15 seconds. Then we have breathe training. You can tap here to set breathe rate, breathing time, and breathe touch. Then we have timer. You can also scroll all the way down to customize the time according to your need. And then we have stopwatch to help you out in your workouts you also have the calculated application here in most of the smart watches percentage function doesn't work so let's check in this one i'm gonna do 50 plus 10 percent so it should have been 5 but it has gone down to 0 0.5 and it also doesn't add it in the first value which means that it doesn't work in this smartwatch also then we have MET data and short video remote controller to control the tiktok videos then we also get the alipay application you can set it up if you use alipay and in the end we have the he and i app application by which you can keep a track of your other friends who are also using WayFit Pro. The smartwatch also comes with the bedside clock mode and in the end if we talk about the battery life then it is advertised to come with a battery capacity of 280 mAh. If I talk about my personal experience, I've been working on this video for about 40 minutes now in which I've continuously interacted with the smartwatch for about 30 to 35 minutes and in this time it has gone down to 80% from 94% losing almost 14% of the battery equaling almost 1% every 2 to 3 minutes. So the battery is not so impressive. So according to that, if you use the always bright option then it can hardly give you 1 day of battery life and if you do not use it then it can give you around 3 to 5 days of battery life so guys this was all from today's video and from the gs9 pro max so it is a great smartwatch considering the body and the display and ui is also quite good but honestly i would prefer the hk9 pro second generation over this smartwatch because hk9 pro has real amulet display hk9 also has insensible knob key while this smartwatch doesn't have it and the ui of control center as well as in the menu in the hk9 pro is more similar to watch os so if you want to check out my review on the hk9 pro you can find the link of it in the description box below and if you would like to purchase it i'm gonna be leaving its link in the description box below and i would really appreciate if you can use that link to purchase the smartwatch you can also visit the channel to find many more amazing smartwatch videos and make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay updated on the upcoming videos i'll catch you in the next one until next time this is imad peace